Welcome. In this session, we're going to look at question three for component four, producing and analyzing. So if you've missed any of the previous sessions and you'd like to catch them, they're all here on YouTube for you to, to view. Um, if you like this format and you'd like to show us your support, it'd be great for you to give us a thumbs up, um, give us a like, subscribe to the channel. All your support just keeps all this going and make sure that we can produce loads more free content for you guys. As well as this, you will find loads of information on um, the, all the exams and all of the coursework on musictechstudent.co.uk, so please check that out as well. For a small fee every month, you can get access to all of the courses to help you successfully complete um, all of the components. So, without further ado, let's crack on. So, for question three, it's part of section A. So, there are five questions in section A worth 85 marks. This particular question is worth around 11 marks. That could change each year, of course. In section B, you'll get one question and that'll be worth 20 marks. So, what kinds of things can you expect from question three? So, once again, it will be a mixing and producing question and there'll be mixed question types. Um, you will be expected to import and e export audio and MIDI files. Um, the sample, once again, the sample question is worth 11 marks. You also have full use of your door. So just like questions 1 and question 2, you will have full use of your door. So if a question comes up that asks you for a certain piece of information, more often than not, you will be able to find that information in your door just using a few of the techniques that you've learned along the way. So once again, this question will be based on one audio or MIDI, MIDI part. So in this particular one, you'll be asked to import both a MIDI part and an audio part. So let's look at some of the questions from the sample. So this is question three, and it's all about the chord part this time. So it says here, import the MIDI file um, chords.mid to a new track in your DAW, align the part so that the chord begins at bar 10. So this is the first time that you've had to align a part that doesn't start at bar 1. And they're just testing you on your snapping and your quantizing skills to make sure everything goes in place. So this particular question is worth 5 marks and you will be given, one of those marks will go towards making sure it's in the right place and that it plays back correctly. So the second import that we need to do is for the example WAV. So it's it's the same chord part that you are recreating, but this time they're going to give you a reference track for you to recreate from. So once you've in, once you've imported this track to a new DA track in your DAW, then you're going to have to start going through the processes of this instruction. So it says here, create a synthesizer sound that matches the timbre of the chord example. So each one of these bullet points will be worth a mark each. So the first one it's asking you is to match the octave. So make sure you listen very carefully, make sure that when you're when you're manipulating your whichever synth or whichever plugin you decide to use, that you get the octave exactly right. So the next thing it says, um, Use a saw wave um, without any effects. So you have to set up a saw wave and make sure that goes into the part. And once again, if you don't use a saw wave, use a square wave or, or whatever, you won't get that mark. They'll, they'll be very audible and they'll be able to hear that. Then you have to match the filter. And then finally, you have to match the envelope. Um, most of this information you will be able to find in your DAW. So for instance, the filter part, if you look at the EQ of the example, you should be able to roughly see if there's a low low pass filter or a high pass filter based on what's happening in the analyzing spectrum. The envelope's slightly harder to determine, but when you're listening back to the notes, you probably, you should be able to hear if it's a long attack, if it's gliding in. You should also be able to hear if it's a long or short um, release. And then after that, you sh if it's a long note, you should be able to hear whether it's going to be a short or long decay onto sustain. Um, the decay effect will drop the volume. So from the from the release, it will go up, and then once it stops going up and it starts coming down, that's how you're going to determine the decay. It's not the easiest thing to replicate, but I, I do suspect that any part they give you won't be particularly complex. So let's move on. So that was question A. So once again, we're still looking at this chord part all the way through question three. So in the B section or the B question, now you're expected to interpret some data. Now, if you look down on the velocity side, this, this question is going to be worth four marks. So each correct answer will get you a mark. If we look down at the 
velocity in decibels, this information you should be able to find in your list editor and you should be able to write it there. And that will be a really good reference point for being able to convert into binary. Um, so use your DAW to get the velocity or something similar will come up um, based on the pitch of, of, of what's playing of course and then finally convert that to binary. So you will have to understand what binary is. You will have to understand how to calculate a, a particular number. So in this particular instance, when you get to the F sharp five, it actually goes up to 99. Um, and the binary code for that will just change the zero at the end to a one, just showing that each binary number is converted into ones and zeros. Um, so have a look at that. Work out how to convert binary. That's going to be your main thing. Once again, sometimes this question comes up, sometimes it, does, it doesn't, but you will need to understand the numeracy of Music Tech for your exam. So the final question then, um, it's all to do with portamento and pitch and actually manipulating notes. So it says here, there are two notes that are played in bars 27 and 28. Create a smooth, um, sustained slide in pitch between these two notes so you will be able to use either a portamento effect for that or you will be able to use some kind of pitch bend automation um, just to make it really really smooth between the notes make sure it glides just like a, a, a chord part would do so you don't have any of these sudden jumps and then finally you're going to be asked to bounce down the part so make sure you bounce it down as question three with your candidate number on it so once again, this is worth 11 marks. So in preparation for this particular question, I would definitely keep practicing importing and exporting MIDI files. I would practice um, recreating synth parts, um, looking at how to recreate the octave, EQs, um, envelopes, things like that. And then practice using portamento effects and pitch bend automation, just so you're prepared for anything like that. Really and truly, this particular practical question could come from anywhere, but that's a, a good it's a good a place to start as any. Um, practice interpreting information from your list editor. So if you're using a full DAW, you, you will have some kind of list editor um, in in there somewhere that that basically interprets the MIDI notes and shows you all of the the data that's been generated from the MIDI notes. And then finally, just have a look at information on how to convert numbers into binary. So I hope that was useful. Keep up your revision, keep up your practice, and I will see you in the next video.